If the first day of this year's state legislative session is any indication, we are in for division, disruptions, lectures about division and disruptions, complaints about journalists covering the division and disruptions, and a lot less of a focus than usual on actually getting things done at the Capitol. Now, perhaps the legislative session will be peaceable and productive. It's just not how day one went. Marshall Zelling, obviously, no surprise that there were protesters who disrupted day one. No surprise given the number of sergeants at arms that were in the House chambers today and the number of Colorado State Patrol troopers. No, it was only a matter of when the protest would start. The Democrats who run everything at the Capitol are split on a number of issues, including the Israel-Hamas war. It was 37 minutes into day one when a protester, this man with a Palestinian flag, shouted from the gallery. As he was escorted out to the hallway, a coordinated protest in all parts of the gallery continued. State troopers led them all to the hallways where the protest continued some more until they were escorted to the basement and out of the Capitol. Earlier this week, Democratic House Speaker Julie McCluskey censured Democratic Representative Elizabeth Epps for pro-Palestinian outbursts during last year's special session. Epps participated remotely today calling it shameful when the House video feed was cut off during the protest. Protesters have promised no business as usual. And I asked Speaker McCluskey if she expects this daily no different than the Pledge of Allegiance. This House is open to the people that we serve. It is important that we uh, ensure that access. We can redirect protesters to uh, come to a committee room and meet with some of our members and have conversations. And if it happens again, we'll take that same approach. Our goal is to try and resolve these peacefully and in a way that protects the democratic process. House Republicans walked off the floor during the protest, saying on social media they left for safety reasons, which struck us as odd because the protesters had to go through a security checkpoint, the legislators are protected by armed troopers, and some of the House Republicans carry guns on the floor. I asked House Minority Leader Mike Lynch, what did they fear from the protesters? It's a combination of not knowing where that could go to, uh, but also not, uh, not approving of that being allowed to occur on the floor. It appears Republicans protested the protest. This happened on a day that leaders of both parties used their speeches to talk about civility and decorum. We have 119 more days to go, Kyle. Perhaps, Marshall, if journalists would stop talking about the division, it would cease to exist. No, that's, that's silliness. Let's talk about the governor. He's going to come in tomorrow. He's going to give his state of the state where he outlines his priorities. Mm -hmm. What we've seen in the past is that a lot of Democratic governors or Democratic legislators, legislatures get everything they want. That was not the case for Polis last year. No, but it's coming back this year that the land use, the state pushing in on local control. You're going to hear that from the governor. We've already heard it from the party leaders going into this session you'll see the mixed applause. Like normally it's like, oh, one side of the room is gonna clap and the other side of the room isn't. It's possible that one side of the room with the Democrats are mixed in what their reception is to what they hear from the governor. All right, that's tomorrow. Marshall, thank you.